Good morning. I was uh, I was shaving this morning, so I wanted to look slick for you guys. Do I look good? Do I look all right? I figured, you know, I'd go ahead and cut a shave real fast. And I found these uh, at Walmart. These are the generic Gillette Mach 3s. I use the Mach 3s. I don't need four. I don't need five. I don't need five that vibrates. I don't need anything that vibrates anymore. Um, and these were just these are just a generic three blade uh, fits uh, Gillette Mach threes. They're Walmart brand. And I have to tell you, about thirty seconds into this, I realized this was a bad idea. These hurt so freaking bad, I was about to put peanut butter on my face and ask Rocky to just eat my face off. I think it would have been less painful than these generic crap sh blades. That hurt so freaking bad, it was like tweezing 10 stubble hairs at a time. Garbage. Yesterday, we, uh, me and the boys went and did a lot of riding with these... Um, little mini bikes uh, I got on my other channel, Dan's Boys and Toys channel. Um, we had a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I put a video up, me and Nathaniel doing a figure eight race with a little hill uh, that we had to climb over. Now these are 100% factory, the lowest of the low end, you know. We're not doing land speed records, but when you're riding these things with no suspension, you feel like you're doing 150 miles an hour, man. It is absolutely a hoot uh, we had a lot of fun five lap shootout me and my oldest my son my younger son videoed it he held the camera did a pretty good job man and uh, later on today in this video we're going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and include some music I'll let you know the song uh, that my nine-year-old mixed on his computer that I bought him for his birthday in September bought him a laptop and he's got a program and he mixed all these sounds and made a song for one of my YouTube videos. So I said, I'll use it today uh, with today's video. Um, but yeah, man, we had a lot of fun. Check out Dan's Boys and Toys channel. I'll link to it up here. And, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's not what you guys are here for, but it's a part of my life. And a lot of you guys have been with me from the start of my channel. So um, it's something that's kind of cool. And I'm a dad just like a lot of you guys are. I'm a mother, <laughs> been called worse, just like a lot of you gals are, and guys. Um, so, you know, you guys need Christmas ideas, or you just want to know how to maintain your kids' toys, not just a lawnmower. I mean, I got, I got like, a lot of toys, man. I'm a kid myself, so that's the one cool thing about, like, when I was growing up, I had an older brother, and we, we used to... We used to skateboard together and sometimes ride bikes together, but he went on like a musical path and I went on like not a musical path. So my father was never really like around to do things with us. Um, so I never grew out of toys. I, I just, I never got to the point where toys didn't, weren't a part of my life. I've always had to have toys um, of some sort. It's like I never, I never closed that, cat, that chapter of my life like where, okay, yeah, I'm done with all that now, you know, uh, I want this or I want that. And it's like, no, I'm not, I'm not at that point. I still want toys. I want to tear up dirt. I want to go dirt bike riding and skateboarding. And I still do all the things like I used to do when I was 10. I do it now, but I do it with my 10-year-old and my 9-year-old. So lucky them, their dad is just a big kid. Uh, I'm sure there's a ton of you guys out there like that too. Which brings me to today's video. Uh, so let's get started. My Craftsman lawnmower, the DGS 6500. And what happened to me a few times, okay, when I got this mower, um, it needed a new battery. You're good, son. Be careful, please. Wear your helmet at all times. Obey all traffic laws. No. Most of them. Okay. Alrighty then. Got my helmet. Uh, your helmet is uh, in the house. Good job, son. So, uh, when I got this mower, the, um, the guy said it needed, what he was told was, it needed two new tubes and a new battery. So, I got the new tubes put on it, and I had jumped the original battery that was in here. I jumped it off of my truck, and then it would start back up. Every once in a while, I'd start it, and it'd start back up. And over the course of two weeks, 
while I figured out what I was going to do with my um, tubes, be careful. Okay. Matthew said that you tried. Matthew's going to come around? Uh, yeah. Oh, I'll be right back. Sorry, where was I before I was happily interrupted by my two little boys? Uh, they're out dirt bike riding now. Or mini bike riding. Um, so I got, I got the tubes all figured out, and then the problem that I had was the battery was still old. And sometimes it would start, and sometimes it would not start. So I bought a brand new battery for it, because like the guy said, it needed a battery, and it was a maintenance free, much like this one is maintenance free. Um, you don't take these off. You can, you can peel these off, but you're not supposed to. Uh, this doesn't have the six, you know, the three positives and the three negatives to put water or distilled water or acid that you can buy. Um, and charge your battery back up. You can't do that with these. So I went and I bought a new battery at Andy's Lawn Machinery. Awesome place. Check them out. They're great. Uh, I put the new battery in and it cranked up fine for a few times and everything's great. Then all of a sudden, we had this issue. Park brake on. Choke. Full throttle. Let's see if it does it or not. Did you see that? Did you see how it stopped? The starter straining. That can be one of three things. A weak battery, a weak starter that you need to go through it and rebuild your starter or just get a new starter, or the crank, or no, I'm sorry, the cam on these bigger motors have um, compression release on them and it works with your valve train. We know it's not the battery because I got a brand new battery and this battery is actually more powerful than the battery that, that was in it in the first place. Uh, so I know it's not the battery. The battery is just fine. Um, I don't think it's the starter, but the starter is very expensive. And to take the starter off and go and get it tested for its pull or draw or whatever the hell it's called, um, that's not cheap. And it's it could be a real pain in the butt to do. Your starter's right here. Um, you know, you got to take it off. You got to go somewhere. You got to get it get it tested. And then you got to hope that they're being honest with you because starters are going to be expensive. I mean, I see starters that are over $200 on certain like lawn mowers and little motorcycles and stuff like that. So starters can be really, really expensive. Um, but the other thing it could be is your valves. And this is like the week of the valves here, over here in, at, at Dan's house. So um, we did all the valves on all my two cycle machines this weekend, uh, the, four, the four mix steels. I did them this weekend, what was it, Friday I did them. I posted that video, how to do a tune-up. It costs $15 per 4-mix steel weed eater powerhead, whatever. Um, so I posted that video. I'll link to that up here. That's an awesome video. Um, a full tune-up, including the valves, adjusting the valves, which they were all out of adjustment on all three of my powerheads. Um, we go step-by-step. Step. Very detailed, very informal or in informational, um, educational video. All right? Uh, we did my Honda, the 100 hour, first first 100 hour uh, valve lash adjustment check. Uh, at around 40 to 50 hours we did it because we're going into winter and we might as well just check it now. Um, and then the mower's gonna sit up for a few months except for maybe bagging some leaves here and there. But I figured it's better to check it now and if there's something wrong when I take it apart, a brand new motor, it could be something wrong in there, something might not have been right from the factory. Let's find that out now, get it fixed through the winter instead of March break out your machine, do a tune-up on it, and realize that, you know, there's something bad wrong, and you got to order parts or something, you know. So we did that. We did all the two-cycle four mix. Um, the Craftsman 42-inch with the Color Pro has hydraulic lifters, so you don't adjust those. And this here has your twin cylinder, and your valve covers are here and here, and they're super simple to do these valve adjustments just to check to make sure and the thing is especially with these bigger motors that make a lot of compression is in order to help it turn over and spin on your starter and on your battery is there's going to be on your cam there's there's a little extra let's just say there's a little extra meat we're going to danify it all right you got lobes and i explained the lobes really good in the honda one where you can see the lobe come around and hit the, um, the lifter per se. Honda's a little bit different, but we're gonna call it a lifter or push rod. It hits the push rod and it and it the push rod goes up and the valve goes, you know, the rocker goes down and it opens your valve. Um, on on this, we're gonna say it this way. 
on this cam, we're denifying it. On this cam is a little extra meat by the lobe, usually on your exhaust um, valve. That's going to pop the valve open real quick. It's not going to affect the machine, the performance of the machine, but it's going to let pressure off as the cylinder is going up on the compression stroke. Just, or maybe on the, maybe it's on the intake stroke. I'm not sure on which stroke. But just before this gets so, so much compression where you can't, you hear that? that you hear that burp? That's letting some air out. That's, that's a, a little burp. That burp has to line up um, with, with the spark and everything else that's going on. If that burp's not lining up properly, if it's burping too soon, let's say, and then you, you, you on the key and you're trying to turn it, this is building up compression and it gets hard. It gets really hard to, to spin this. That little burp should make it so this isn't so hard right here. And that's where it can be hard to turn. Well, it's not going to do it right now. Maybe, maybe it affects it more when it's hot. That's usually, usually trying to restart it, actually, now that I think about it. Um, but if the meat, that little extra meat on the cam isn't burping your, your cylinder to let pressure out, just like burping a baby, then everything gets blocked up and this isn't going to want to turn and you're going to think you have a dead battery or you're going to think you have a weak starter when actually you just have your valves not adjusted properly. That was a whole long way for me to explain to you that hey, every once in a while, maybe once a year, check your valves. It's really simple to do and I'm going to show you. But I wanted to give you some symptoms to look for while, while you're mowing or while you're trying to mow. Like right now, this is, this is hard. That's kind of hard to turn. Yeah, there's compression, but it should burp that compression. And there are times when I'm on the key and it's like, and it's trying to go. It's like, you can see it's like trying to go and you can hear the whining and you know you're heating your cable up and you're, you're heating your starter solenoid up and you're heating your starter up. Everything's getting hot because you're straining the crap out of everything with a brand new battery. It's sending all of its power uh, to the starter and the starter's trying to turn this machine, but the machine just won't turn because you didn't burp the baby. So I'm going to show you guys how to burp the baby. That's what we're going to do today by adjusting the valves properly, which should be four thousandths. Now, uh, I had a question about my um, four thousandths. When, when we say four thousandths, if a mechanic is saying four thousandths of an inch, they're saying four thousandths of an inch, not millimeter. Okay, Four thousandths is ten millimeter. Ten millimeter like if you see on the steel feeler gauge, it said the number 10 on it and people ask me in a comment, is that 10, is that, is that, why am I saying 4 or 6 or something like that? Um, if you convert millimeter to inch, 10 millimeter is four thousandths of an inch. Make sure that you are listening to uh, whoever is instructing you, alright? Uh, so if you're in uh, a country that uses millimeters over inches, then you need to do the conversion. So if somebody tells you that this needs to be five thousandths, then you need to do the conversion. Five thousandths might be 12 millimeter. I don't know. You need to convert it. Um, but these engines are four, usually like you'll find four to six. I'd always say when you do a valve, valves, you know, valve uh, gaps get loose. They don't get tight. They get, if something got tight, like if your gap got tight, you got something bad wrong. Like something bad wrong. Valve, valve flash gets loose because the lobes wear, the push rods wear. When you do your adjustments, if you're given a spread like four to six, do it to four. Um, because as soon as you start your motor, that four is going to become, you know, 0.004 is going to become 0.0041. And in a month, it's going to be 0.0042. And another month it's going to be 0 0.0043. You see what I'm saying? The gap's going to get bigger, bigger, bigger until it's out of tolerance. Um, so if you stick your feeler gauge in there and you stick four in there and it's pretty loose and you stick six in there and it's, eh, it's okay. Don't button it up. Adjust it down to four and then button it up. You already took the cover off. You already went through the process of finding top dead center. You might as well just tighten it down a little bit. 
All right, so that should help burp the engine. That should line the, the little extra meat on the on the crack on the cam up uh, to where it opens the valve and allows it to burp out the exhaust. Now, I had another symptom yesterday um, that not only was it a little bit hard to start, but when, when I was mowing with this machine way out along the creek, going all the way up, making our path even better for the mini bikes, there was popping coming from right here, from this side of the machine. And look, look at what's right here. The muffler exhaust pipe. This is where I was hearing it coming from. I wasn't hearing it on that side where the carburetor is. I was hearing it on this side coming from this wheel while I was running. Pop, pop, pop. When you put that symptom, that popping symptom, with the fact that it's hard to get it past the compression stroke because it didn't burp properly, that tells me we're going to take these valve covers off and we're going to have valves that are out of adjustment, probably a significant amount. So today's video is we're going to adjust the valves on the Craftsman DGS 6500, which has a 26 horsepower Briggs & Stratton V-twin engine. You want to do this with the engine cold? All right, we ran it for just a second, like a brief second, not this, this is still cold. Uh, so just watch out, you're going to have some drips. You're going to need to break torque on the valve cover. You got one on this side and it's a V-twin, one on that side. You're going to want to take your spark plug out as well. That just makes it easier to spin the motor over. So there's one. Two. We'll do this side on video um, because that other side has the fuel pumps. I'll show you that. This one gives us more room to work. We'll do this one first. That'll work. Take the valve cover off. You gotta get some oil out of here. This is a pressurized oil system. It, uh, it doesn't have a sump with you know your crank and then a little dip that's splashing kind of like a spoon or oil splash that splashes oil all around inside your engine uh, this is actually a pressurized oil pump system so there's probably going to be more oil in here than what we're used to with like just a regular little motor just be prepared for that have your towel ready and a catch can All right, not too bad, not too bad at all. Wasn't nearly as much oil as I thought it might be. But we'll keep the towel here just in case. So, here's your rockers. Gosh, almost seems like I got top dead center right here. Unless they're that loose. But we'll find out. We'll take this spark plug out. And the other spark plug needs to come out as well. Not a bad idea once a year. New spark plugs, adjust your valves, new oil at least once a year, but new oil filter, new air filter, new fuel filter. Those are the things that you should always do on your annual, you know, in the winter. You should always do that if you hate when that comes out. Man, this thing's burning good. That's in good shape. Keep that up here. Let me get the other side. If you notice right here is your fuel pump. Okay, this fuel pump works on a vacuum from the head. That's what's going to make the diaphragm. And it's chuck, 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 and it's making a vacuum like a plunger in a toilet. And it's pulling the fuel from your tank. And then it pushes the fuel to your carburetor. Or your fuel injector or whatever you got, whatever your setup is. So when you do this side, just be careful for this. Don't ruin it. Come on, spark plug. Get out. That one's burning good, too. A little rich, but not bad. All right, at this point, we're going to take the end of our screwdriver. We're not going to jam it in there and cause any damage, but we're going to put it where the spark plug goes. And you're going to find where it stops. That's the top of your piston. Now, 
as the piston comes up with the spark plug screwed in, that's what creates your pressure. Um, that's what creates your combustion. So you, you put your screwdriver in and you feel this. The easiest thing to do, watch that screwdriver. It's going in. Now it's coming out. It's coming out. Still coming out. 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 It's all the way out. See how much play I got right here? And the valves aren't moving at all. Wiggle. Wiggle. That's how you know you're on the right stroke. When the screwdriver's all the way out, you got wiggle and wiggle, and you can move your flywheel that much, and the rockers aren't moving at all. Here's what you're looking for now that you have them loose. This is your rocker. This is your valve spring. Inside that, inside your valve spring is your valve all the way to here and what you're doing is you're looking for the gap between the rocker that's moving and the valve that doesn't move right there the exhaust is pretty sloppy and the exhaust is the one that's gonna burp and if it's sloppy and if it's not burping at the right time and it's allowing too much pressure to build in the cylinder and the starter isn't turning the flywheel so we're definitely going to tighten this exhaust up a tick we'll tighten this up just a tick you see that see it wiggle you see it moving not much but you see I mean that's pretty loose it's I mean it it there's like no drag watch there should be a little drag see it right there that needs to be a little bit tighter so once you get your valve cover off um, you're looking for your four thousandths on your feeler gauge 0 0.004 is also uh, what is that 10 millimeter 10.2 millimeter so a lot of people will have that question. So they say, is that a 10 I see on there? It's a 10 for 0 0.004, okay? So you're looking for 0 0.004, which is four thousandths of an inch, like I explained earlier. And then you're just looking for your gap right here, like I showed earlier. Now, I broke torque on these already, on this one. I want you to see something. This is a jam nut. This jam nut is on this threaded insert. Okay, you see how it's rounded right here? That round right there goes to this rounded edge right here that's on the push rod that's coming up back and forth from the cam. It's pushing on this right here. Okay, this is threaded as is your valve is threaded. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna thread this back in. This is just for your edumacation. As I turn this in, watch the valve. See it pushing on the, see it pushing on the valve. See the rockers pushing on the valve. See that? And as you go this way, it loosens on the valve. So when you're making your gap, you're adjusting this right here. This is all that you're doing. You're making it more space. right here or less space more less and you do it with your feeler gauge this other nut that's on here is just simply a jam nut but your adjustment is with this on this configuration on other configurations, this whole setup is 
here instead. This is easier to work with than here because once you have this set to the way you want, say right here, when you tighten your jam nut down, it puts pressure on the back of the valve. So you can have this set exactly where you want. And you go in here with your point zero zero four, and it's exactly where you want it. Right, right here. Let's say that's where you wanted it. Then when you tighten your jam nut down onto the back of the valve, it loosens it. It puts pressure right here. It collapses the valve, the threaded, the threaded rocker arm. It pulls it tighter onto this insert. And that teeny little bit can make this 0 .004, 0 .005. That's why they give you a spread 0 .004 to 0 .006. It doesn't have to be an exact tolerance. It just has to be in there. So here's the jam nut. millimeter hold this nice and snug and you don't want this insert to move if the insert moves you change your tolerance oh, it's not it's not moving I'm just trying to find the groove Snug. Not letting the insert move, tighten your jam nut. And that feels pretty darn good to me. Wipe your area dry. Make sure you don't have oil residue on here. Inspect your valve cover for any cracks or damage. Looks like it's in good shape. I'll put this baby right back on. Make sure the mating surface is clean. mount that bad boy right back up. It's not a hard task, but it can be a tedious task. But it's an important task nonetheless. It changes the characteristics of your engine, the efficiency of the fuel. You know, I mean, if it's running like poop, you're burning money out there trying to make money. So if you spend a, a half a morning sitting here in your garage, doing a little bit of work. Remember, everything that you guys see me doing on video, video makes it about four times longer to do than if you just do it. If you just, you know, if you could just tear in nonstop and not stop to talk about it, it's so much easier. And cross torquing. And now I'm just going to go to nice and tight. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. And come back to this last one just to make sure. We're not going to put the spark plugs back in because we still need to spin it over for the other side. Look at this, man. I'm getting freaking blood everywhere. Golly. If you find that your gaskets that you put back on are seeping oil, and you'll find that pretty quick because you'll smell it on the muffler, on the exhaust pipe right here, uh, just pick yourself up some new gaskets or peel them off and put a gasket maker on. You can get, you can get like RTV gasket stuff. Just tell the guy at like the auto store what you're doing and he'll point you in the right direction.
guy or gal, whatever. Because uh, you want to get one that's okay for heat, you know. Alright, let's fire this bad boy up. Definitely the valves. Alright, um, now we just check for leaks around the valve covers, make sure everything's looking okay. And uh, if so, we throw the hood on. If not, let things cool, put some RTV sealing around the valve covers, and we are done. Alright, so that teeny little bit, that little bit of a difference, about two or three thousandths of an inch, uh, can make that much of a difference in the performance of your machine. Hard start. That hard start will kill your battery and really hurt your starter and hurt your solenoid. So if you have a hard start like that where it's like, eh, it won't go, eh, eh, it won't go, eh, it won't go, and then you got to move your hand and spin that flywheel by hand a little bit to get it off the compression stroke and then it fires right up, chances are your valves are out of adjustment and you're not able to burp your baby. So our baby's burping. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Tell me about the whistle. The whistle. Oh, 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 oh